Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, it's What Makes This Song Great, Episode 5. Since we focused on Nirvana for Episode 4, I thought today we would look at Pearl Jam, and in particular, their biggest hit song off their first record, Jeremy. Let's get started. Let me start off with some specifics on what actually makes this song great, because people are always saying, well, you're not really talking about that. You talk about the different parts. Well, that's actually what is great about the songs. But this song in particular has some really interesting things. First of all is the melody. This is actually a very sophisticated melody that Eddie Vedder sings in here. The verse starts in A, but it's really uh, an A chord and then a G major over A. So, so the scale that he's singing in is A mixolydian, which is the fifth mode of D major. The thing about the melody is that it's incredibly intervallic. I will show you when I put the notation of the melody up there along with Eddie's singing how intervallic it is. Now when I say intervallic, I mean it jumps. It uses a lot of arpeggios. It uses some, some huge skips in the melody, octave skips. It also uses very complex rhythms. So it's intervallically sophisticated and rhythmically sophisticated. But let's check out the beginning of the tune where it starts with the bass. Now the bass is actually a 12 string Hamer bass. I believe it's a Hamer. But it sounds like a guitar to most people when they hear it. They don't realize that what you're actually hearing uh, with Jeff Ament, the bass player, who also was the writer of the song, is that you're hearing this 12-string bass play here on the opening figure. So right there, and those are harmonics from the bass. But it sounds kind of like a, almost like a 12-string guitar with a lot of low end on it. So let me show you how that is done. Okay, you're gonna have to imagine that I have a 12 string bass since I don't actually have one, but it's played in this position like this. Then build up. Then it goes into the riff in the verse, the bass, which really carries the verse. But the verse part is kind of characterized by an A to G movement in the guitar, but with an A pedal in the bass. So it really is A mixolydian. Okay, we know what the bass does in the verse. It plays that repeated riff. Well, the guitar enters, the two guitars with a, with a fast tremolo. You hear the fast tremolo? Then... So it's two phrases. The first one is... Rolls on the G, and the second one is... Uh, just playing it basically an A chord. You can hear the open B string ringing in there. It continues on. Here's the vocals. Then the heavy guitars come in. Double guitars. So you got uh, the riff to an A power chord to G over A or G5 over A to D over A. And then Stone Gossard plays. You're doing A add 9. Okay, now when it gets into the chorus here, I'll put it in the voice. Oh, so the one guitar, Stone Gossard's guitar, he's going, it's A minor, and then he does the A add nine riff with it ending on the A sus too. The other guitar is playing this. Holding on F. And there's A. 
and just go and holding on that F note right as the other one's playing let's listen to it with a bass hold on that Okay, so that's the chorus. Now, it gets a little tricky here because there's actually an acoustic guitar part that happens in there that's playing something completely different. Okay, I'm gonna play the acoustic guitar and the bass together. Check it out. This actually really makes the chorus. It's actually the confusing part that most people can't hear is this one guitar part that happens. So it's going from... So essentially, open strings, which is really G over A, so the same, like you're playing that. Then D, E minor. Then now one of the really interesting things is there's a real hard dissonance in the middle of this chorus. Right there. You hearing this? F holding on the guitar while the while this acoustic's playing E minor, the other guitar's playing that. Da, that's a flat nine dissonance. Also, we have that in the high guitar here that's being played, Stone Gossard part. You hear in that? So you have the you got the E minor chord with the 11 and the flat 6 and the flat 9 being held together at the same time. It creates a really fast dissonance that resolves to A major. Uh, but this, when it goes, Jeremy spoken, it's using, using a C natural. It's the first time you're hearing that note in the tune. In the chorus, you hear what is a, really a downward modulation. We've been hearing that that C sharp in the vocal melody and everything else in the verse and all of a sudden in the chorus we hear it Jeremy you hear that C natural there so that's what what we call a downward modulation that's really the brilliance of this chorus is that it goes from essentially A minor to A major right there. Another thing that's really characteristic of this first Pearl Jam record is the really roomy drum sound. It's a really powerful drum record. The drummer is Dave Cruzen, who, who really, I think, played on the record, but I don't think he ever played uh, with Pearl Jam really after that, maybe a few live shows. But you hear this intro fill. Just one side note about Pearl Jam and their first two records, and it's something that I actually love about the band, but it's an observation. If you think of the tune Once, Jeremy, Alive, Why Go, all these songs, and go to the second record uh, that has Animal on it, that has Daughter, that has Dissident, they have that kick on the end of two. It's in all these songs. It's really out of like, out of Hendrix. Voodoo Child, that, uh, or you think of it's different. It's, they, they were able to write all these great songs with that thing, like dissonant, you know, or this tune, right? 
Even Flow has the exact same drum beat with that same accent on the end of two. It's a signature of Pearl Jam's style in the first couple records. It's really cool. It's what gives it its sound. It's always, they always have these rhythms where the bass goes, but that uh, right there. That's really powerful. It makes you move. Okay, let's talk about the melody, because this is what I was talking about, about being really complex and intervalic. Let's take it from the top. At home, drawing pictures of mountaintops with him on top, lemon and yellow sun. Oh, was, all these jumps. Arms raising a bee, and the dead lay in pools of maroon below. And daddy! Pools of maroon below, dead. Da, da. There's an octave jump there. How many melodies have octave jumps in there? Very few. He's going all over the chord changes here. He's going, it's it's really intervallic. He's jumping big. It's not scalar. Uh, there, I mean, there's some scalar things where it's going da, 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 da. Let's follow along with the music and the melody. At home, drawing pictures of mountaintops with him on top lemon yellow sun arms raising a bee and the dead lay in pools of maroon below and daddy didn't give attention oh to the fact that mommy didn't care king jammy the wicked That is really strong melody writing. I mean, that's honestly, it's like a jazz musician would play. Somebody that's really playing all these really hip intervals over a mixolydian. When we get to the second verse, the guitars clean up again. They play slightly different. Mike McCready's part has kind of a Hendrixy part to it. Right here. Harmonics. Now, there's also something else that enters right here in the second half of the verse. Cello. My jaw left right I don't know if you've ever noticed on the out chorus, it always sounds like there's strings that come in. On the bay, whoa. There's, it always sounds like, man, I hear a string line. Well, there is. There's a cello that plays through the whole ending of the song, and it begins in the second half of the song. And he hit me with a surprise. Blends perfectly with the other guitars, with the bass. You can't even hear it, really. But you will now. tambourine in there. Next we move to the bridge where everyone plays the riff in unison. Right here. Then the vocals come in. Really intense. The drums are full on. Build up. Uh, bass does a walk up through uh, A minor essentially here. C, D. And then after the walk up, it goes. It does A, G. Right here. A, G. Back to AF. That's really.
really interesting that they would make that change there to go from and then this then the fourth time sets up the next session because you have it again then you have the build on A then FG A minor then you start hearing that cello course it does this killer fill where he pedals on eighth notes on the kick check it out then there's a cymbal catch there and it goes into the coda part then, that's the bass That's why that song is still being played on the radio almost 30 years later. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, you can find it on my website at www.rickbeato.com. Thanks everyone for watching.